A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. <sighs> My old man noises are getting worse every week. Right, hello everybody. This week might be quite a good laugh because uh, as you might be able to hear, I'm a bit ill and I'm talking 90% through my nose. Um, very nasal, so um, hopefully that's funny. Uh, and that's part of the reason that we're indoors. The other thing is that the weather at the moment is rubbish. And as much as I've spoken in the past about how there's no such thing as bad light, it's just meh at the minute. And I'm not even inspired to go out and scout, so. Maybe I'm just being lazy, but this week what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about something I actually feel quite qualified to talk about. Quite qualified. That's difficult to say through your nose, quite qualified. And as you'll know if you've watched many of my videos, it's not always the case that I'm qualified to talk about things, but this week, buying cameras and the mistakes I've made buying cameras over the past five, six, seven years when I've bought dozens of them. And tell you the truth, I make no apologies for that because I see buying cameras as a hobby in much the same way as photography is a hobby. It's important though, I think, that you treat them as separate hobbies because the two are a lot less linked than lots of us would like to think. Yeah, anyway, first mistake. The more pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency you spend on a camera, the less you get for each of those pounds, dollars, euros. Diminishing returns, basically. This GX1, which I bought last year and used for a video, which I'll link up here if you've not seen it. This cost me 50 pounds from MPB, and it's got 16 megapixels, perfectly fine dynamic range, perfectly fine noise performance in good light, and I find it's a fantastic little camera to use. Uh, this Leica M11 costs 150 times more. Now, by all accounts, this is a better camera, but is it 150 times the camera that this is? No. Is it twice the camera that this is? Probably not. And admittedly, that is a very extreme example. But the more you spend after the first 50, 100, 200 pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency, the less you get for each of those coins. And I say this because it's well worth bearing in mind, as most of us, when we're changing cameras, what we're looking to do is upgrade. And uh, when you think about the actual upgrade that you're getting and the amount that it's costing you, often I think it's not actually a good value proposition. When you think, of course, about how else you could spend the money, things like photography trips, workshops, software, other ways of improving your photos. Uh, often, I think, upgrading your camera is not a worthwhile endeavour. Says somebody who spends most of their money on cameras. Have you stopped laughing at the nasality yet? No? Good. Uh, here are two APS-C cameras and both of them shoot somewhere in the region of 24, 26 megapixels. So the files that come out of these cameras are really quite similar. They differ in pretty much every other way though and that is much the same across most of the camera market. Now it's common, I have found, particularly because I make videos, that I'll be asked, uh, what did you shoot that on? What camera did you use for this image? What camera did you use for that image? And the reason I think often that those questions are being asked is that they think there's something unique about how a particular camera has enabled a particular image. And in my experience, that is rarely the case. I think most cameras are capable of most image types. Now occasionally there might be an instance where a particular camera has helped me get a particular image. But more often than not, that's because of everything other than the sensor. Uh, so for instance, I might be able to get a shot with my X-Pro3 looking through the OVF viewfinder uh, and the frame lines that it provides with the lens that I'm using. Uh, I might be able to get a shot that I'd struggle to get with another camera because I can see outside of the frame. Uh, similarly, I might be able to get a shot with my A7R that I would struggle to get with my X-Pro3 because this has image stabilization. And although it's rare that a camera lends itself to a particular photo, uh, when it does, it's very, very, very rarely the sensor that uh, is responsible for that. And the reason I say that is because more often than not, I think people give too much credit, way too much credit, to a sensor for the quality of an image. And not necessarily image quality, but the quality of an image, which are two very different things. Oh, I hate being ill. 
say I am very, very fortunate as a uh, photography YouTuber, or whatever you want to call me, uh, that I get to try lots of different cameras. I get to see what works for me before ever getting rid of any of my money. And I mean, I don't always take advantage of that. The X-Pro3 I bought sight unseen, which is stupid. But by and large, I get to try before I buy it. And I can't emphasize the importance of that enough. Cameras, as we can see from my old trusty G9, uh, they're designed to be held. This grip is not here for fun, it's so that you can hold the camera comfortably. These buttons have not been placed randomly, lots and lots of research has gone into where they should go. And as much as landscape photographers in particular don't really hold their camera because it's always on a tripod, most photographers will spend most of the time holding their camera when they're taking photos. And how a camera feels when you're doing so is one of the biggest factors that leads to uh, either the success that you have with a camera or otherwise. And this G9, for example, I have found to be the most comfortable camera I have ever owned. Uh, the button placements, all the ergonomics, I just find it absolutely phenomenal. I spent four or five years using this camera, I think, and even now, after not really using it all that much for a year or two, I just, I feel like I'm completely at home with it. I could change any of the settings without looking at the screens. I love it. Now, the reason I say this is that I think most people choose their cameras these days based on a spec sheet that they see in a press release or from a YouTube review video. Basically, people are buying cameras online and there's nothing wrong with that, but I would really stress try before you buy because how a camera feels in your hands is probably the most important thing. And let's be honest, most cameras have very similar sensors these days. Most of them have very similar features. One of the biggest differences between all of them is how they feel, how they interact with different size hands, where the button placements are, and that is the stuff that's gonna matter when you're out in the snow with two pairs of gloves on, or if you've been shooting all day, or if you're out in the dark pre-sunrise and you don't know exactly where the buttons are. All that stuff is gonna be the difference between good and bad photos, potentially, and it's not thought about anywhere near enough. I should probably just bring all the cameras over here, shouldn't I, rather than walking back and forward. Just seeing this. This is my first ever camera. I think. First ever digital camera, anyway. I love when point and shoots used to uh, display how many megapixels they've got as like a point of boasting. 10 megapixels. Love it. I'll maybe make a video with this if I can turn it on. Anyway, one of the things I think I'm worst at when it comes to cameras, and I think most photographers are really bad at this, is working out what we want versus what we need and appreciating the chasm that often exists between those two things. So this Leica, for instance, when I was thinking about buying this, there was a part of my brain that was trying to suggest that I needed this camera. Now, I don't need this camera. No part of me needs a Leica M11 to take the photos that I want to take. It's ridiculous. Uh, and the reason I say that is that the other week when I uploaded a video uh, about my first week with this camera when I was taking photos in Abu Dhabi, looking at the comments and some of the emails I got off the back of that video, uh, lots of people were considering buying this camera because they liked the photos that they saw in that video. Now, first of all, let me say, don't do it. Do not get a Leica M11 for image quality. There are much, much, much cheaper solutions for this kind of image quality than this camera. Uh, a Sony a7R, for instance, get one of those if you want 60 odd megapixels, really good image quality. Uh, this is entirely unnecessary and about twice the price of one of those brand new. And let's be honest, I don't need 60 megapixels. I've never needed 60 megapixels. I could probably count on one hand the number of times I've been grateful for having shot with 60 megapixels versus a more sensible megapixel cam. And I've been using the A7R for two years now, taking it all over the world. Less than five shots, I've thought, oh, so great, I've got such a high resolution version of that file. And of course, nowadays you can use software quite effectively to up resolution. It's an entirely different topic. But our brains are really, really clever at working out how to convince us that we need something rather than just want something. The reality is that we need very little most of us as photographers, unless we're wildlife photographers trying to get the eye of a flying eagle two miles away in focus. And while there's nothing wrong with wanting gear, I think it's important we acknowledge when we want gear versus need it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes us much less likely to waste money. But number two, it doesn't let us off the hook for bad photos. And it used to be the case all too often that if I didn't get the result I wanted, I'd say, ah, oh, 
I've not got the right camera. And as a result, I wouldn't improve because I think, oh, I just need to buy a different camera. The reality is that that was never the case and I needed to improve myself rather than get another camera, which wouldn't have helped more often than not. And so being protective of the word need is crucial to develop a healthy relationship with our cameras. Which sounds odd, doesn't it? A healthy relationship with your cameras. Uh, lenses outlast cameras these days by a factor of four or five times. So your camera, there might be a new version of it in two years and then another two years after that, or maybe three years. But the lenses, they won't get updated for eight, nine, 10 years. And more often than not, the lenses that we buy, we will keep for significantly longer than the cameras that we buy. And that's because technology in the cameras moves faster. But I would also argue that the lenses that we buy have a much bigger impact, typically, all things been equal, than the cameras that we buy. And so as a result, choosing a camera before we choose our lenses is a bit like choosing tires for a car before you choose the car. Now this does get a little bit tricky because as I was saying before, uh, things like ergonomics with cameras are crucial and therefore if you've chosen lenses only to find yourself in a system where the ergonomics of the cameras don't really work for you, clearly that's no good. But basically making sure that a system can accommodate you and your needs in terms of its lenses before you consider the cameras, I think is the right way to go about things. Again, I say this as someone with the experience of thinking like this, I don't always do it and I've made lots of mistakes by buying cameras before considering lenses before, uh, I've not always achieved it but yes, I. I will strive to in future because it's cost me a lot of money not thinking like that. Anyway, thank you for watching and subscribing and all the rest of it. Hopefully I will be well next week and hopefully the weather will be well also and uh, I'll see you then. Big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace as well. So one of the things I've been doing through my current illness is uh, updating my website. I've got a new logo as you might be able to see. Love that. Uh, and I've been adding some new pictures as well. Also, for the first time this year, this month, I'm going to do my monthly newsletter, April. Now, it's super simple for me to put a newsletter together through Squarespace. I'm just useless at finding the time to do it. But like everything on Squarespace, it's all drag and drop. I can copy from previous newsletters. I don't need to know any code. And in truth, it probably takes about 15 minutes to put it together. So yeah, it's, it's ridiculous that it's got to April without me doing one. I'm sorry. Also, if you want to be on the newsletter, there's a link in the description. But Squarespace allows me to take control of my online presence in a way that no other platform does. And I can curate my portfolio to look exactly how I want it to look. And I can manage my online store with no technical knowledge at all. I can get a snapshot of my analytics for my website, again, without knowing any jargon. And ultimately, I can be rest assured that people are seeing my images in the way that I want them to be seen. And if you're a photographer, I would highly recommend checking out Squarespace as a place to have your own online portfolio. Or maybe you want a blog or your own online store, or you want to send newsletters out more often than I manage. Uh, and if that's the case, I would highly recommend going to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James, and you'll get 10% off of that first purchase. So uh, a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support. And a big thank you to them for making a service that's so easy to use, you can do so when um, you're talking and breathing exclusively through your nose. I keep saying that, am I? I don't, it sounds like I am. Anyway, see you next week when hopefully I sound normal. Uh, thanks for watching, please subscribe and all the rest of it. Cheers.